Welcome back. I'm Dr. Ali Sabur, Professor of Vascular Surgery, Ain Shams Medical School, Cairo, Egypt. This is part three of clinical evaluation of the peripheral arterial tree. This introduction will help you to be actively engaged in your clinical ward session. Clinical examination should always start by general examination. Note whether the patient is comfortable at rest as well as his or her general well-being. This is followed by local examination that includes inspection, palpation and auscultation to assess the arterial circulation. Don't forget to wash your hands or rub your hands with alcohol gel. Part 3 demonstrates the characteristic signs of chronic ischemia that could be looked for by inspection. Starting your local examination, the first thing that you will notice if present is the color change. Chronically ischemic limbs are not always pale. In fact, pallor is a constant sign in acute ischemia, where limbs are classically pale or even cyanosed and cold. On the other hand, chronically ischemic limbs may become pale with slight elevation. However, with dependency, they become ruber in color, as you know already from the history taking. The color transit from pallor to ruber is slow. The explanation of this sign will be given to you in your clinical ward session. The coming two pictures are classical. The foot is slightly elevated. Notice the pallor with elevation. Notice as well a patch of gangrene over the fourth toe. This area is a potential pressure area because of the flexion deformity of the toes. This flexion deformity is classical in diabetic patients. There are other deformities characteristic for a diabetic patient. Look for them, look for the names, and try to explain the deformity present in this picture. Discuss this with your tutor in your clinical ward session. This is the same patient, but with the foot left dependent for one minute. You can clearly notice the ruber with dependency. Note as well, pus infection, you can see it here, between the toes in relation to the black gangrenous patch. To compare and contrast, this is a patient with acute ischemia. Of course, by now you expect that the limb is cold. This color appearance is called skin mottling. At this stage, this color change or mottling can be reversible, but if left untreated, it will be fixed. This is a sign of acute ischemia. See it in the picture, but you will not see this in your clinical round because in the clinical session you will see a patient with chronic ischemia. Patient presenting with this picture can be seen in the emergency room. We are still talking about color change. This is a late presentation of a patient with ischemia. You can notice the blue color of the toes. It is a fixed color change. These toes are already lost. These toes are dead. A permanent blue or even black color is termed gangrene. This is, of course, a fixed color change with permanent tissue loss. So, there are colors that you will look for, pallor, 
reversible rubber, reversible cyanosis, irreversible color changes, which may be blue or black. Next, you should look for an ischemic ulcer. The picture on the left side shows the classical ischemic ulcer, which is deep. Note the tendon in the floor of the ulcer. The edges shows no signs of healing. This is what we call a punched out edge. For comparison, the picture on the right side is taken one month after revascularization. The floor shows red granulation and parts of the edges are sloping indicating a healing edge. This part is a sloping edge. Description of an ischemic ulcer and demonstration of its characteristic features will be demonstrated in your clinical sessions. This is another example of a typical ischemic ulcer opposite the pressure area, the heel. Note the gangrenous edge. The ischemic foot is subjected to trauma during walking, during wearing tight shoes, or with prolonged bed rests. Potential pressure areas should be inspected for trophic changes, for ulcers or gangrene. The figure shows different areas of a potential pressure. To complete inspection, we look for the vascular angle, which is the capillary filling time, the venous filling, and trophic changes. The angle to which the leg has to be raised before it becomes pale is referred to as the vascular angle or Burger's angle. Please note that raising the limb should be done slowly to allow for observation of the pallor. In an ischemic limb, elevation to 15 to 30 degrees for 30 to 60 seconds may cause pallor. A vascular angle of less than 20 indicates severe ischemia. This test will be demonstrated in your ward session. After elevation of the patient's legs, ask him to sit up and hang the feet over the side of the bed. A normal leg and foot will remain healthy pink. On the other hand, an ischemic leg which slowly turns from pale after elevation to pink and finally it will turn to purple red. That's the ruber color. In severe ischemia, it may take as long as 15 to 30 seconds. Veins of a normal foot are dilated and are full of blood, even when the patient is lying horizontal. Please look to the picture on the left side, on the right side. In an ischemic foot, the veins collapses and sink below the skin surface to look like pale blue gutters. Sometimes we call this guttering of the veins. Note that this is very evident in acute ischemia. However, some chronically ischemic limbs may still show it. On the other hand, some chronically ischemic limbs may still have superficial veins filled. The last thing to look for in inspection are the trophic changes. You may notice wasting of the muscles, loss of hair in a previously hairy area, or thick opaque nails. All are possible findings in chronically ischemic limbs. This is the end of part three. Part four of this presentation will demonstrate palpation and auscultation. Thank you.